Philippines Day, and I welcome all of you. And uh, today's topic is uh, Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, real Indian scientist. And the speaker is uh, one of our very interesting person, Dr. Raghavendra MP, Associate Professor and Course Coordinator, Postgraduate Department of Microbiology, Maharani Science College, and uh, Mysuru. Uh, he hails from a place, Madhuru, located in Mandya district of Karnataka, where agriculture is main source of earning. He obtained his primary education in rural areas and moved to Mysuru to obtain BSc from Yuvarajas College, MSc and PhD in Microbiology from University of Mysore, Mysuru. And he was uh, qualified in several national level competition, competitive exams such as the University Grant Commission National Eligibility Test, NET, for lectureship, Indian Council of Medical Research Junior Fellowship, Research Fellowship. Then also he is recipient of Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR SRF, during his research work 2003 to 6. And he was appointed by Government of Karnataka through Karnataka Public Service Commission during 2006 and 7 as lecturer in microbiology and started his service in Government College for Women, Mandya. Since 2007, he is serving in Maharani Science College for Women, Mysuru. Presently, he is working as an associate professor and course coordinator of postgraduate department of microbiology. So during 2000, I mean, to, uh, 1999 and 2006, also he was a course coordinator in the department. Awards and recognitions are many uh, on his side. Recently, he has been awarded with the Best Research Poster Award 2002 and AMI Best Oral Presentation Award in the International Conference uh, during 2022. Recipient of Indian Science Congress Association, ISCA, English Science Award during 2010. Received the award comprising of cash prize of I mean, 25,000 and a medal from Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, sir. He was conferred with Annie Kuryu's Endowment Best Teacher in India 2016, award from St. Joseph's Institution, Kerala, with cash price of 10,000 and Sadeshi. A award with Student's Favorite Teacher by Negil Yogi Foundation and Vidyavardhaka Education Trust, Mysuru. Elected President of Association of Microbiologists of India, Mysuru, chapter during 2016 and 17. He is a fellow of conservation of biodiversity also in 2014, recipient of fellow award during 2012 of Society for Applied Biotechnology and recognition of achievement for its recognition of achievements and contributions to the field of microbiological technical technology. He is serving as a chairman and member of board studies and board examination in several autonomous colleges and universities. Students of both UG and PG were guided for uh, science exhibition and project works. The concept Bubble Boy, Verosum, nanotechnological drug delivery system, and microbes at Mars was well appreciated and awarded prize. Research profiles are these guiding students of students for PhD, MPhil, and MSc dissertations in microbiology. One of his students successfully completed her research work and awarded with PhD degree in microbiology from Bharatiya University. Presently, one thesis is submitted for award of PhD degree and another is going on, on, on ongoing. So 45 research articles were published by him in national and international peer reviews journals with 1,500 citations with a H index 17 and I10 index 24 in Google Scholar. H index 5 is Scopus. He has a book to his credit and 22 book chapters in books published by national and international publishers such as CABI, Springer, Elsevier, etc. He has deposited three SCAR uh, marker sequences in interna international gen banks, contributed study materials to JSS University of KSVU. He has attended several national and international conferences. He also has chaired different sessions and delivered invited lectures in several national conferences. Major projects completed or ongoing also so served as a course coordinator of two 
MOOC online programs, virology and microbial physiology and metabolism offered by Swayam platform, UGC Government of India 2019-20, served as an in institutional coordinator of RUSA for a grant of 2 crores 2018-19. He was successful in completing a major project founded by VGST for rupees 20 lakhs and two minor research projects founded by UGC. Coordinator of rupees 3.8 lakhs UGC funded free coaching classes for CSIR, UGC, NET or SED and other competitive exams for postgraduate students of chemistry and life sciences uh, 2011 till date. Course coordinator of 20,000 rupees 20,000 sanctioned by the Central Unit Kolkata uh, funded CSIR, UGC and other competitive exams oriented programs for postgraduate students held during October to December 2010 in association with the AMI Mysore unit. He is a resource person. He served as a resource person for UGC, uh, Janadarshan TV channel and MHRD sponsored MOOC massive open online courses programs and FM uh, 100.6 radio delivered awareness talks and interviews, NSS and paneled uh, training institution for Karnataka, South Region, Karnataka State Open University, divisional level training program for pre-university lectures organized by the Department of Pre-University Education, Karnataka. He is also source per resource person for IAS, KS coaching classes and has delivered more than 100 lectures in various training programs, NSS camps, schools and colleges. And programs organized are, as li are like this. He has served as convener, co-convener, and organizing committee members of several state, national, and uh, national level conferences. He is very active in organizing several programs in Association of Microbiologists of India, Mysore unit, and served the same in different capacity. He is actively involved in organizing free orientation programs for competitive exams such as CSIR, UGC, NET, SCT, ARS, ICMR, and other competitive exams. He is known for organizing awareness programs related to microbiology. So it is only a brief account what I have given of his achievements. And uh, I welcome uh, Dr. Rajvindra, sir, for the uh, topic to be delivered. Uh, please, you can start, sir. Over to Dr. Rajvindra, sir. Thank you, sir. Purandar, sir. It is not a brief sir. Tumba So it was a nice introduction yeah. Mm, yeah. from Purandar, sir. I thank the Purandar, sir, for introducing me to welcome, uh, the rest well. audience who are uh, attending this program. And I thank uh, GB Santosh Kumar, sir, uh, Mysore Science Foundation for giving me this opportunity. And I thank uh, my friend Santosh Kannada, who is working as PU lecturer in uh, science, biology, uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity and choosing this topic. Uh, and uh, my dear uh, fellow science lovers who are attending this uh, uh, five days uh, webinar, uh, which is coinciding with uh, National Science Day. Uh, these deliberations are actually uh, to make aware of the fact that there are so many contributions given by the Indian scientists. And uh, these things are somewhere, I think, uh, somewhere uh, we are losing uh, the importance or giving the importance to these scientists. Maybe in due course of time, we need to talk more and more on their contribution. And we need to carry this forward to the younger generations because India is nowhere back in giving scientific contribution to the world. And I'm very humble. I'm really humble to present uh, today's talk on uh, Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, a, a marvel, a jewel in uh, actually the Indian science and the technology, who has contributed a lot. And I believe why we need to celebrate Indian uh, National Science Day. It is because to trigger the scientific temper and reading habits. I think we lost both nowadays because most of the things are guided by the information technology where we are not in a position to say whether it is good or bad or whatever comes in the internet or in some uh, whatever the media we consider it as a fact but fact is different and uh, these scientists are worked hard i think especially my salute to uh, sir jagdish chandra bose and uh, i truly really selected a nice word 
that he is a true indian scientist who worked hard and finally has given everything to india and he is now standing as a wonderful scientist who has contributed both physics and plant physiology and at the beginning to all my uh, who are uh, uh, gathered here for this uh, uh, webinar uh, i am not a expert in physics and uh, uh, a botanist and i am i'm i'm basically a microbiologist who knows bit on botany and uh, uh, more on uh, uh, microbiological aspect i am good but i took this challenge to speak on sir jagdish chandra bose with uh, so much courage because anybody has to celebrate the contribution of uh, jagdish chandra bose sir. and uh, uh, before uh, we start with the talk i think we need to introduce jagdish chandra bose sir, to the august uh, participants present in the webinar jagdish chandra bose was born in bengali uh, kashyata family in uh, musinganj uh, bikrampur bengal presidency present day bangladesh on 30th november 1858 and i think my talk will be in the beginning i will be introducing uh, jagdish chandra bose uh, sir uh, early life and then scientific life and what is happening today with uh, uh, the contributions of uh, jc bose sir so this is the beginning that is it is early life of uh, jagdish chandra bose if i give you uh, he is a wonderful uh, scientist who actually molded entirely on a indian concept entirely on a indian ethics and his uh, father is uh, was a uh, bhagwan chandra bose actually he, he was a well learned fellow and uh, during that period when i think these uh, happen these things happened when we were under uh, british rule so we, we were not having the independence and uh, uh, jagdish chandra bose being celebrated as an international scientist during the period of british ruling so uh, during british, british ruling bhagwan chandra bose was serving as a deputy magistrate and i think uh, he belonged to the educated family and what is uh, speciality with uh, jagdish uh, chandra bose is is he was allowed to learn the things from nature and why i consider it is because if you look at this statement what uh, jagdish chandra bose has given i think i read out as it is i think the whole presentation goes with this statement at that time sending children to english schools was an aristocratic status symbol in the vernacular school to which i was sent the son of the muslim attendant of my father sat on my right side and the son of a fisherman sat on my left they were my playmates i listened spellbound to their stories of birds animals and aquatic creatures perhaps these stories created in my mind a keen interest in investigating the workings of nature this is what is the real beauty that uh, i think uh, uh, being indians being uh, grown with a gurukula system of education be, being grown with uh, the whole hearted involvement in the guru and learning everything from the guru all the skills and we lost somewhere there i think uh, uh, jc bose sir is uh, actually lucky to have a good parents who was actually sent to the vernacular school and he started learning from the basic basic things whom with whom you uh, whom he interacted with the basic uh, people who are working with the basic nature natural rule of the system when i returned home from school accompanied by my school fellows my mother welcomed and fed all of us without discrimination although she was an orthodox old fashioned lady it was because of my childhood friendship with them i never realized that there existed a problem common to the two communities hindus and muslims so this is what actually is the statement given by the jc bose regarding his early education in the school he actually mingled with all the common people who were working even though he, be he belonged to educated community so he was sent and he learned so many things from his classmates and later he joined uh, the school in 1969 he joined st xavier schools at kolkata in 19, 1875 he passed the entrance examination equivalent to school education and he joined university of kolkata and was admitted to st xavier's college kolkata and once the the scientific knowledge or the scientific learning was laid down by the foundation laid down by the parents as a foundation later it was carried forward by he mentions 
the name of a father eugene lefont eugene lefont who played a significant role in developing his interest in natural sciences so he received ba from the university of calcutta in 1879 and again it is again the decision of the parents who actually turned jc bose as a scientist of or a great scholar because in the early days of his education jc bose wanted to go to england to compete for indian civil service and being in the indian civil service uh, father want, doesn't want his son to become uh, a, a regular employee in the government system so and again he wanted he, he joined medicine actually at the at the university of london however he had to quit that medical education because of his uh, ill health and also the warder in the dissection room was really uh, exaggerated his uh, illness so he discontinued both i think uh, that is where a, a great scientist was born actually he secured admission later in uh, after uh, discontinuing all, both the things he secured admission in christ college cambridge to study natural sciences he received a ba natural sciences from university cambridge and bsc from university college london affiliated under university of london in 1884 and dsc from university college london university of london in 1896 and uh, here is a period where he, he leaned forward for uh, physical science and physics especially and uh, he, he had a wonderful teachers uh, during his uh, uh, learning lord raylag michael foster james dever francis darwin francis balfour and sydney vines were the teachers under whom he, the uh, the knowledge for science and uh, knowledge for physics it started brooming up in the uh, minds of the uh, jc bose at that at that time bose wa was a student at cambridge Prafulla Chandra Roy, I want to mention this. They were actually they developed a, a very good friendship. I think uh, Prafulla Chandra Roy is a father of Indian chemistry, so I think uh, his contribution is also much even uh, compared to anybody else in the uh, foreign countries. And then uh, uh, J C Bose uh, married to Abala Bose. I think uh, these images are actually uh, very difficult to get it. I somehow I got it from the internet and I have taken it. Uh, thanks for to the internet sources so abala bose i think she is another active lady who worked uh, uh, especially for bringing a new uh, knowledge a new knowledge based pedagogical system especially she was interested in bringing the girl childs for the education system and i think uh, for her uh, contribution in bringing the pedagogical system from different uh, parts of the world and she was elected the secretary for brahmo balika uh, shishya uh, Shikshanale, Shikshalaya, a girls' school in Kolkata. I think I, if you look at the J.C. Bose's uh, entire family life, I think even the student life, I, even the uh, his study, is is coming across with the good people who are actually shaping a scientific temper, uh, which is contributing to the greater level for the Indian science. So after having completed his education abroad, J.C. Bose chose the teaching of science as his career in India. this is what really i appreciate so he went abroad so he learned so many things he came back he joined in india as a teacher so he was appointed as professor at the presidency college calcutta in 7 january 1885 and he obtained his full distinction from 21st september 1903 and if you look at these two sentences which always bothers you what is this full distinction you, even though he was appointed as professor at uh, 1885 i think in the in uh, life of uh, jc bose i think 19, 1885 to 1900 uh, played a vital role in giving contribution to the science especially physics and physiology so when he was appointed uh, in india i feel sorry for this in india being a native talent he was not appreciated so he was given half of his or two third of his salary and i think uh, jc bose did at any point of time would have gone back to uh, any nation uh, inviting him for uh, with a full salary or attractive salary but he stayed with all these discriminations in salary or not giving importance to the native scholar in the british rule he continued his uh, uh, temper to be a teacher he started as a teacher and he got this full distinction 21st september 1903 because during this period the entire nation started looking at jc bose 
entire scientific community who are working in the physics started giving the reference of the jc bose so we can't we can't suppress any talent to the greater extent so when everybody is talking about jc bose and you have the discrimination in your own nation some at some point of time you need to evolve you need to emerge that is what jc bose has shown it with so much of tolerance i am telling you if you have a tolerance for i think uh, irritation for a week or a month or a, a year i think you have to think of an alternative but uh, hats off to the, the scientist jc bose even though with all these discrimination he has done a wonderful contribution during this period and he actually achieved or got its recognition through his commitment through his scientific publications through his uh, actually publicity that he has obtained due to his scientific uh, writings all over the world so this is what i want to bring it i don't know again i question i question this why why these indian scientists i think great scholars were not actually even today we don't remember much on the jc bose sir or anybody so i don't know what is wrong with indian system and what is wrong with why we enter into british rule why many scientists i think jc bose sir will be remembered because if you go for a search we have the bose institute array of informations are available volumes of in pickers why he has a habit of writing he has written so many scientific articles and he has published it and that is where jc bose sir is living with us because i think if if i believe so that uh, having all the trauma of uh, facing discrimination and everything he remained with us because he is having a hobby of writing and many scientists who were working in those period who were not actually in the hobby of writing might have perished without any uh, uh, reputation without any recognition hats off to those work those uh, brains who really laid the foundation for the indian science uh, science and technology uh, through this i i personally believe that there are many who has to be brought forward who has to be given to the younger generation that india is of course from the beginning laying a strong foundation for many of the research many of the science and uh, technological aspect so i think uh, going forward i after knowing his uh, early life with uh, uh, family and other thing uh, the three whatever i think in the scientific uh, technology what happens here is whenever the new things comes up so whenever a stem cell is discovered i think another 10 years stem cell will rule the scientific uh, technology so if you come out with some uh, new discoveries another 10 years will be on uh, genome sequencing like this it carries forward every 10 and decades it is a new invention that is coming up when uh, jc bose uh, started his research i think these scientists need to be mentioned even though they are from the abroad they are the one who laid a foundation for uh, i think uh, communication they are they are the one who Uh, started discovering on radio waves uh, they are starting working on electromagnetic waves which are actually uh, i think uh, that is the beginning i think henrich hertz published the results in 1886 and 1888 another great scientist uh, james clerk maxwell so who predicted uh, uh, mathematical uh, i think electromagnetic radiation of diverse wavelengths and another scientist british physicist oliver lodge so who, they were all they started uh, working on uh, so wireless communication or something like radio waves which are connected with uh, 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 what is that called as uh, wireless communication so after being uh, uh, i think uh, uh, taken forward or ta- uh, actually taken uh, uh, basic knowledge on these things jc bose wanted to prove further take it further by uh, the concepts which are laid down by these scientists and this is what is remarkable with the jc bose he never asked for the big instrumentations he never asked for the huge money to conduct research and that is what is actually uh, nowadays i think funding is what is important for most of the research but if you look at the jc bose he invented whatever the requirement for his research is required so why jc bose stands as a Uh, a, a real role model for all of us he used his brain as a laboratory he never wanted a huge building he never wanted a big instrumentations he used his brain as a laboratory and he developed his own machineries he developed his own instrumentation to prove that whatever he is thinking whatever thoughts happening in the laboratory can be proved with the instrumentation and this is one of the instrumentation that he developed to prove that millimeter waves can be developed with the uh, system 
So he realized that disadvantages of long waves, that is uh, Hardian Hardian rays, that is three meters, and he developed three five mm millimeter. I think this is this is the one which revolutionized the concept of uh, I think. Uh, uh, telecommunication or whatever communication with the radio waves. So by working with electric radiations, having very short wavelengths, he succeeded in demonstrating that the electric waves are polarized by the crystal nemalite. So this is what is important. And uh, this crystal was discovered again by uh, J.C. Boser himself. So he, he, even though he borrowed the knowledge from different scientists, and he worked on his thoughts with his own inventions. That is where J.C. Bose stands as a wonderful scientist. And another thing I would like to mention here itself, if you really ask uh, who is the first scientist who really considered to be uh, the Indian who laid the foundation for uh, advanced research and other things. You see, what happens here is the, the research in India or anywhere else is considered based on their publication, based on their uh, patents, based on their uh, communications and all those things. I think uh, when I was going through his literatures and other things, He's the first person who could record scientifically the contributions or the investigations, what he has done it. So in 1895 itself, he could write to the Royal Society, he could publish paper. So in that way, J.C. Boser remains as the first scientist who has actually contributed the scientific paper abroad. So in that way, J.C. Boser, I think, uh, is a, who laid a foundation for communication, who laid a foundation for uh, what is it called as... Uh, international repute. So I think uh, hats up to him. So he, this crystal was discovered by himself. He then proved that a large number of substances which are opaque to light, example, coal tar walls, etc., are transparent to electric waves. So this is where I think we are com getting connected with uh, 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 communication. So we can communicate with electric waves where uh, we, we don't have the barriers. So through this concept, we determined the index of refraction of various substances for uh, visible electric radiation and thereby eliminating a great difficulty which had presented in Maxwell's theory. He also determined the wavelength of the electric radiation as produced by various oscillators. And this is what is the one which actually laid a foundation or opened up uh, the uh, scientific temper, uh, I think, uh, which proved the scientific temper of the J.C. Bosa. So during November 19, 1894 and 95, in public demonstration in town hall of Kolkata, Bose ignited gunpowder and uh, he rang the bell at a distance using millimeter range wavelength microwaves. And these millimeter range microwaves were developed by his own instrumentation, by his own scientific temper. So Lieutenant Governor Sir William Mackenzie witnessed Bose demonstration in Kolkata town hall. So Bose wrote all these things. To ben in a Bengali essay, Adrishya Alok Invisible Light. The invisible light can easily pass through brick walls, buildings, etc. So therefore, messages can be transmitted by transmitted by means of it without the mediation of a wireless. So this is where I think the wireless message or wireless communication came into existence. So then why I think uh, I think uh, they, again the controversy comes here. Uh, did really miss uh, J.C. Bose or missed the uh, Nobel Prize. Again, a controversy comes to the picture. So what I learned from my understanding in through uh, going through the autobiography of many of our scientists, I think I remember uh, Ramchandran sir, who has laid a foundation for uh, the structure of the proteins. I think uh, Ramchandran sir remains as another great scholar who actually uh, stand beyond Nobel Prize. I think uh, his contributions uh, when he was not having computers and other things, with all these small available uh, instrumentation, he could develop the Ramachandran plot. Even today, nobody has proved it wrong. But he was not considered for uh, Nobel Prize. And he is, here is another fellow, J.C. Bosa, having contributed a lot with very simple investigations. I think that is where I think mostly the Indian people were not considered uh, for Nobel and other, maybe because we Indians were growing with lack of uh, funding. We are we were under somebody's uh, uh, ruling, and all these things might have uh, not given opportunity for us. I think this is where I think J.C. Bose uh, demands appreciation at all ages of uh, Indian science and technology. His first scientific contribution was on polarization of electric rays by double refracting crystals, 
was presented in Asiatic Society of Bengal, which was held in the 1st May 1895. So it was published in the Journal of Society. Later, two of his research articles titled on a new electropolariscope and on the double refraction of the electric ray by a strained dielectric. So this is what I think, I'm, if you go and look at the uh, earlier scientific uh, community, I think uh, J.C. Bose stands unique because he has contributed articles I think per year, three, four, five, six, like this. He has contributed and he has published it. And he, whatever he observed as very interesting fact, he used to write it. He used to send it to the publishing authority and he used to publish it. And if you look at uh, the way he has taken the science and technology to the greater extent, he has a patent in the 18th century itself uh, in between. He has a patent to his name. He has published so many articles. I think uh, that is where I think he started improving his reputation as a scientist and that is where he got his all reputation back in 1903 what is uh, i shown in the previous slide so these research contributions won the attention of the scientific world so then comes i think uh, if you look at the statements i think uh, uh, during those time i think indian being appreciated by the indian is a very huge uh, difficulty because we were under somebody's ruling and if we were appreciated by somebody else out from outside India, I think I think I want to quote these words, literally filled with wonder and admir admiration for much for so much success in the novel and difficult problem which he had attached. So this is what is the, actually Lord Kelvin has given it when he has when he sent his all his observation to publication. Lord Kelvin gave this statement. So these, I think several statements are recorded regarding J.C. Bose uh, from uh, uh, scientific community staying at the abroad. So Lord Rayleigh, actually. So I think if you look at his early life, I think Roy, Lord Rayleigh has laid a foundation for his scientific temper. temper. When, he, when he published early publications, so he communicated. He took the responsibility of taking J.C. Uh, JC Bose uh, communications to Royal Society. So he communicated the results to Royal Society, which in turn paved the way for two more publications, like Determination of the Indices of the Electric Refraction, which is published in December 1896, and another paper, Determination of the Wavelength of the Electric Radiation in June 1896. Look at the time period. So he started, once he started swimming in the science, I think everything what he is observing, because it is new, everything what he wanted to do is a new thing, because whatever his observation was actually uh, is a normal path it's a normal path so whatever he observes he used to write it and he used to send it for public uh, uh, publication so through these publications so he can improve upon his education so he got the degree of doctor of science and he also obtained ma in 1896 and this is uh, followed by india of course when somebody is doing uh, so much of research when it is appreciated by uh, the western community so India has to do something. So government of India with due appreciation deputed him to Europe. I think this first deputation of J.C. Bose to Europe actually has given a, a wonderful opening, wonderful thought process for uh, J.C. Bose. He met so many scientists who are working with physics. He met, he contributed a lot in conversations through uh, scientific uh, meetings, through seminars and other things. I think uh, he has presented a several lot of uh, papers uh, during his first deputation to Europe. And I think there are few, these are the things, I think, titles, complete apparatus for studying the properties of electric waves and the selective conductivity exhibited by polarizing substances. And a very appreciable thing is that I think he's the scientist who actually invited for the Friday evening discourse. And I think only few uh, will have this uh, reputation of uh, entering into this Friday evening discourse where lots of uh, servants of uh, sci physics are uh, sharing their knowledge. I think after being uh, uh, present in the Friday evening, I think one of the spectator quotes the presence of uh, J.C. Bosa, something of a rare interest in the spectacle presented of a Bengali of the purest descent, descent possible, lecturing in London to an audience of appreciative European servants upon one of most recondigned branches of modern physical science. So this is one of the uh, remarks given by the spectator. And I think uh, later, his journey is, I think, spectacular. So then he invited uh, to address scientific societies in Paris. 
He exhibited apparatus he invented and demonstrated the laws of the re re reflection, sorry, refraction and other polarization of electric waves on 9th March 1897. Uh, uh, okay, so then he is uh, invited for uh, uh, repeated, he repeated his experiments in, in front of uh, members of academic day sciences, which included point care. So all these great scientists were there surrounding him, listening to his discoveries and uh, inventions. And these servants highly appreciated the research findings of the Indian professor. M. Karno, who was the president of that uh, academic science, actually appreciated his contribution and recorded his words. Later, he visited Germany, addressed on electric radiation, which was later published in uh, the Berlin paper in 1897. And this is where I think uh, we have the controversy associated with discovery of the radio. And who got the Nobel Prize, I think, 18. Uh, uh, I think uh, 1909, if I write, 1909, uh, Marconi uh, got the Nobel Prize for his discoveries. And if we take Marconi discovery and J.C. Bose, I think they were on the same timeline. They were working on the same timeline and he is the one, I think, uh, J.C. Bose, sir, who is also talking about wireless communication, who is also demonstrated in very early of his, uh, uh, I think, uh, teaching uh, uh, system. So when, he's, when he was a teacher, actually, he was also first experiment to prove that telecommunication, so micro, sorry, wireless communication. Occur. So when you compare the contributions of uh, Marconi, and if you compare the contributions of the J.C. Bose, somewhere, I think being Indians, we consider that J.C. Bose missed an opportunity to be considered for Nobel Prize. I think there are so many issues that comes into this picture. I don't want to enter in because it is elaborately discussed how Marconi, I think there are so many uh, issues also which are presented. I think I have referred so many volumes. So there Marconi actually would, I think at least as a part of the Nobel Prize winning partners, uh, Jesse Bose would have been considered, but it has not happened. I think uh, if you ask uh, what could be the reason is that Jesse Bose is a true Indian. I'm appreciating giving this title because he never wanted to uh, have money for all his discoveries and inventions. He wanted to keep it open. So whenever he asked, uh, I think uh, J.C. Bose was asked why you did not patent all this thing. So I think there are so many issues actually, even still there are uh, statements which are given by uh, his teacher. I think uh, he was not allowed to patent it because maybe a few, uh, I think uh, there are so many controversies that comes to the picture because if you look at this, I think uh, uh, Bose expressed his disinterest in commercial telegraphy and suggested others to use his research work. So uh, there are, uh, I think, a new discovery laying a foundation for an industry. The industry is laying a foundation for an economy. So money is involved. I think so many factors come to the picture. I think J.C. Bosa never wanted to be into the picture. So he kept everything open. So in that way, J.C. Bosa might have missed the Nobel Prize. And I think uh, he, he stands as a wonderful uh, discoverer or an inventor associated with radio. So I think uh, Bose announced the development of a iron mercury iron core with a telephone detector he presented it to royal society of london but i think uh, he is he is, a, he is a celebrated scientist beyond the nobel prize so that is what i can deliver to the young people who are really attending this having all the trauma having all the discriminations and having all all this uh, 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 i think uh, uh, being kept under uh, uh, less uh, identity uh, J.C. Bose started working on, working on, publishing, publishing. Till his end, I think he has contributed a lot to science and technology, never bothered about whatever it comes on his way. So a key contribution for the radio, especially radio, Bose developed a core receiver. So Galena, it is, a, I think, a iron ore, Galena. So it is having silica. I think uh, uh, Galena is iron ore, actually. If I'm uh, sorry, because I don't much belong to physics. So he worked on that. I think he, all these uh, instrumentations, all these uh, materials were discovered by himself. So then I think uh, in which he, he, he got the uh, actually patent, uh, which is actually supported by Sister Nivedita Manu. So though he did not discover rectification, his work on the properties of materials is sometimes cited as prehistory of the solid state physics, which was, rise, which was to rise later and become key to modern electronics. And if we start looking into the several aspects of the radio, I think uh, as he wrote to Tagore, a radio telegraphy company advised him 
requesting that he stop publishing papers until they could cut a patenting deal with him so so many things might have stopped him so that is where we missed an opportunity to have the nobel prize in the name of uh, jc bose and another interesting turning point and this is where i think many scientific community and that period uh, i think uh, never wanted this shift but this shift has laid a foundation for lots of researchers connecting living and non living materials i think uh, when he was working with some uh, thing i think i would like to give it as it is he found that the uncertainty of the receiver was brought on by fatigue and that curve of fatigue in instrument is closely resemble the fatigue curve of the animal muzzle and this is what is a one of the observation as it is i have taken it from some literatures so he, he, he observed some fatigue uh, some uh, uh, observations in the instrumentation suddenly he got a thought yes if something is going in the animal cells if some such things happens what happens so this key observation from an instrument to the living system started taking him away from the physics it is not away from the physics he started inclining himself into the plant sciences animal sciences and other thing with a wonderful concept or basics of physics and this movement actually helped us a lot in amalgamating the uh, the diverse uh, scientific thoughts like uh, physics you can't say physics is different biology is different everything is unique unique in its own connectivity and this is where i think jc bose started moving towards physiology and uh, i think from year onwards he started talking about i think this was also not taken forward actually so when he started talking about plants as a life people started i think what is this he he started giving plants do respond plant do cry plant do have a neurons plant do have impulses they carry the they carry they respond they sleep all these things started giving coming coming out from his discoveries as a scientific communication i think that was not digestible for people who are really into the physiology scientists who are really into the plant physiology and when he started giving it through the scientific investigations i think uh, this has led a wonderful transformation of physics into the plant physiology so i think he is the first person to argue that even you can't discriminate non living organisms or non living materials not being responding to any radiation not being responding responding to abiotic factors i think he started giving a wonderful definition for the plant world he laid a foundation that plant do respond like you and me and everyone because they do have the response system they do respond to the stimulus and that is where he started working on that so i think uh, again in the beginning whenever a new research comes in whenever new thoughts comes in scientific world i think there should be always a opposition because we will be uh, disproving the already uh, available uh, conception uh, it may be misconception or anything like that but when we started proving it that it is a misconception usually in the beginning period we have a opposition and jc bose sir had this opposition from the true physiologist and they never wanted to accepted that they, they will respond in actually like animals they respond plants uh, also they are responding they have the uh, respond uh, responding system and all those things so uh, there was something actually uh, they never i think uh, they can't digest it i think jc proved jc sir has proved it beyond anybody's doubt through the scientific discoveries and another important thing is he never kept quiet he started exploring upon beyond the boundary of any science beyond the boundary of any subject he started moving uh, i think he, here is another one binocular alteration vision he developed the artificial retina so if you look at the contributions of i think uh, uh, jc bose uh, it goes on i think uh, when i started when i took this topic actually uh, i thought yes i can do it but it took me it took lot of time for me to prepare all these slides because you can't stop it will never end it goes on there are so many areas he has touched upon i think uh, this is one is a uh, one person who actually strongly opposed uh, jc bose so a true influential uh, uh, plant physiologist john burden Sand sanderson actually he, he never wanted the jc bose concept to uh, percolate into the scientific community so he opposed it directly but he proved it this is the wonderful discovery in the jc bose uh, and if you visit the bose institute in kolkata you can witness this instrumentation 
he himself developed do you believe or not a plant's growth can be recorded and plant growth can be altered plant growth can be enhanced and if you start thinking about plant and other thing as a system of living plants are living they have their own uh, way of approaching they are having their own way of responding to the stimulus so you wanted to prove it when he started telling that uh, plants are having a life there is a huge uh, opposition so he discovered a, a instrument that is displayed here so this is what actually has given everything so plant growth recorded at the minute of the minute second so it was recorded as a graph so this is a cresco graph that has given a, a, a wonderful insight into the plant growth which has which is recorded at in the instrument level so i think uh, this is the greatest discovery that proved that plants had is having a life so then i think uh, he, he has developed so many uh, his own instrumentation okay so then growth recorder i think uh, for growth recorder he developed this balanced chrysograph he developed it and whatever he has recorded actually through these instrumentation which were discovered by himself he sent it to publications and i am happy that uh, editors commented on his papers and uh, reviewers has commented his paper and you can see this the marvel of these instrument is that the growth which takes place during a few beats of pendulum is measured and in less than quarter of an hour the action of fertilizers foods electrical currents and various stimulants is determined by these instrument so now please if you ask me the question if you say that the plants are responding to the fertilizers to electric currents and other thing i think uh, did he not actually uh, given a insight into the uh, green revolution did it not say that the plants can be stimulated for its growth with fertilizers and other thing so but he did it as a part of the experimentation but this has given into uh, taken a shape into a huge uh, uh, discoveries or huge revolution in the history of agriculture hats off to jc both sir being a physicist who laid a foundation and i think uh, this is the exclamation i think uh, a statement given by the editor of the scientific american what is the tale of aladdin and his wonderful lamp with his own investigation instrumentations he proved that the plants do respond to the external stimulus and if you ask me this sir what are the other contribution these are all the list i just want to read it out i for uh, the sake of the audience here response in living and non living plant and animal life all plants are sensitive tropic movements Uh, application of mechanical theory like autonomous movement of plants ascent of sap and growth fundamental identity of reactions sensation memory image and its revival death struggle and memory revival comparative electrophysiology transmission of excitation in mimosa mimosa and man hours of sleep in the plant irritability of plants these are the topics i think i i referred few books i have taken the title each topic will go for i think half an hour of explanation so i think uh, at the last part of my presentation i would like to give why he has to be considered as a great scientist of an indian system he retired especially everybody has to retire and jc bose retired from the service from the same college after putting in 31 years of service after his retirement he wanted to build a institute which contributes to the indian science and technology through his own investigations through his own inventions so there comes the bose institute the bose institute earlier planned for 5 lakhs do you believe or not the 5 lakhs he paid it from his own savings for the entire service he has put in he has saved some money and he has given it back to the society and if you go to the website of the bose institution a great contribution a great visionary of indian science and technology has a you sir if you were to be in the audience if you were to be in the hall i would have given a standing ovation and a huge salutation to you so he has he has laid a foundation and one thing is that he, he gave an opportunity for other scientists to come and work work with him under the banner of bose institute on 30th november 1917 the anniversary of his 60th birthday 
he dedicated on his birthday he dedicated the institution to the nation for the progress of science and the glory of india hats off to the great scientist who born as an indian and he has given back everything to india for the science and technology so that is where i think if you go to the website you can see this image a pleasant man a great visionary a scholar so uh, he has laid a foundation for an institute and you can visit this i think i have taken the screenshot from the website of the institution so this is what is the address you can go on there okay i think uh, i want to give these two names because uh, uh, whenever jc bose i told you know whenever you are there i think no stones are thrown on a fruitless tree so when you are doing something definitely there is opposition definitely you are put into some problems i whether you like it or not so you'll be inviting so many problem because even though you are not talking, you are not communicated with anybody somebody will be having rivalry on you because your energy because of your uh, maybe uh, extraordinary thoughts or uh, progress so i think uh, jc bose sir also has come across with so many problems during this i think maybe financial crunch maybe i think uh, i think he, he had a problem with plagiarism also i think uh, his data was uh, i think manipulated or something like that so he had a problem actually and and most of his scientific communications were actually edited by uh, the great uh, scholar uh, sister nivedita menon and she i think in the beginning slide i gave i think she has helped in getting the uh, patent for uh, jc bose sir also so i think uh, uh, i think i need to add the contribution of sister nivedita menon and also uh, tagore sir i think uh, when uh, he, he was in the research i think in the britain uh, he had a uh, some financial crunch i think uh, two fellow i think uh, if i put it uh, the tagore sir and rc dutt who arranged some financial support for uh, uh, contributions scientific contributions or the scientific investigations of the jc bose sir i think uh, 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 tagore sir i think is the literature he used to call him as acharya so thank you one and all i think uh, I, i may be in the right time uh, thank you for giving this opportunity uh, to share with you all the greatest scholar of uh, indian origin who lived as an indian and uh, dedicated Very everything good. to indian science and technology thank you for the opportunity uh, and the all thank this you, are, uh, taken from the literatures and books available uh, i think i thank uh, my friend uh, santosh kannada who is who actually has given a wonderful books to me to go through this uh, thank you gb santosh sir uh, for giving me this opportunity i hope your time with me is meaningfully meaningfully spent thank you one and all certainly sir certainly thank you so much sir raghavendra sir thank, thank you, you so sir. much thank you sir and uh, and uh, i think uh, this evening is actually yes. a very useful time for the all the participants i believe because a true indian scientist what you have uh, titled for uh, the topic now this is really i'm more than 100% of people as we look into the insight of the, what our uh, researchers he has done what all contributions he has made for uh, we people and uh, uh, the response of the plants to the food and electrical electromagnetic radiations and so many other uh, non living uh, stimuli is actually uh, is very much useful present day to improve the uh, what do you call agricultural field and in green revolution as you said sir so thank you so much sir thank you for your uh, very useful and uh, uh, what we can say the detailed coverage uh, lecture what you have given yes. um, yes. sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, uh, scientist. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, question, question session. Are all questions? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Questions. You can, you can ask questions. The participants may ask questions now. Sir, uh, this is Adishri, a student. Uh, actually, this is not related to topic which you delivered lecture, but uh, yeah. the question is about microbiology. Yeah. Uh, can we uh, reinvent natural dyes by you know, mounting it on a bacteria natural pigments of plant by mounting yeah. it on bacteria no 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 i did not get it uh, i did not get your question actually so you have a natural uh, dye and if you mount it on bacteria what happens bacteria gets stained that's all uh, no, so now what's like your question i've read yeah. uh, 
read an article they are uh, there they are trying mm. uh, to reduce the uh, pollution of water yeah so they have uh, planned for mounting it on bacteria and uh, using it in uh, dyeing and textile uh, industry how yeah this is this is, is uh, no 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 this is what uh, you can't say it is mounting on the bacteria because in microbiology there is a basic technique we call it as staining so we use lots of staining because that will increase your resolving power so if i think uh, Uh, bacteria and other thing will take the stain and you can easily observe it so uh, what you are talking about is it is not mounting on uh, bacteria if i go with the scientific terminology you are bringing the dye in contact with the bacteria because bacteria are having a array of enzymes which are able to take up these st- stains in their metabolism convert them and modify them so like this i think they are going to develop a metabolomic system so through which i think if at all i think water water if if we a water coming out of a dye industry you definitely will have a dye as an uh, waste or a dye as a pollutant so if you can add a bacteria there and a bacteria having a, a ability to use azo dye and other thing so they will degrade the dyes which are present in water so this is what is the concept of a bioremediation so bioremediation i think uh, using bacteria degrading the dyes available in the uh, water as a pollutant so i think uh, i think if i take it rightly i think this is what you are expecting from me is it right uh, yes sir yeah uh, i the think there are they... a little wrong sir like yeah, yeah i, I think i collect the words right yeah i think I, you i think i have taken it in a right way i think the only two possible uh, things i think you are mounting it with bacteria is for the purpose of observing it and if you are mixing dye with the bacteria is the purpose of bioremediation these two things are possible i think uh, i don't uh, know beyond this <laughs> as a microbiologist thank you sir okay thank you anything else uh, you would like to clarify i think i have so many other things if you ask me questions on plants i did not add it because uh, one hour i wanted to finish it off there are many things you can ask me regarding plants if you would like to ask i will just give it to you otherwise i think i will wind up the session physics i i think i told you no i am not expert on that i can talk a bit i think like a child but if you ask me something on plants and what sir has did and how what is happening presently with the plant system and how it is contributing to the green revolution what is the indigenous microflora how uh, a plant which is growing in shimla will not express it in plant Uh, the tobacco growing in hunsuru will not be grown in mysuru why if you ask me those questions i think i am ready to answer i hope uh, there are no questions sir 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 can we can excuse me sir yes sir i am i am asking a question to you yes sir, sir. There, are, there are certain plants confined to certain geographical areas yes sir uh can we make them grow in all types of uh, climatic conditions and in all uh, geographical areas sir that is, where, uh, that, gene, <laughs> that is where the problem yeah, no, yeah, no, no, sir yeah yeah please that please. is where that is where it becomes problem sir what happens yes. you know if you start playing with the genes and other thing i think you, yeah. it can never be indigenous it can never hmm. be indigenous i think uh, by this time i would have grown the apple plant in my garden yes yeah that, that is not possible because the decision of a plant growing in the soil is the soil only the decision of a plant growing in the soil is again the interaction between the soil and plant and yeah. again i think yeah. if you look at the principle it is a law of limiting factor it is a law yeah. of limiting factor it is not the surplus nutrient available in the soil decides the plantation 